In this presentation, a reverse Barton's fracture of the distal radius Miller AO, classification 23B3, will be treated with a 2.4 millimeter variable angle LCP two column distal radius plate. The objectives of this exercise are to identify the clinical indications for the application of the variable angle LCP two-column distal radius plate, to explain the three-column theory, to show the principles of the variable angle locking system, the pre-operative planning, the instruments needed, the patient position and the approach, and the application of the implant. The clinical indications are fixation of complex intra- and extra-articular fractures and osteotomies of the distal radius. The distal radius and distal ulna form a three-column biomechanical construction. The intermediate column is the medial part of the distal radius with the lunate fossa and the sigmoid notch. The radial column is the lateral radius with the scaphoid fossa and the styloid process. The ulnar column is the distal ulna, the triangular fibrocartilage, and the distal radial ulnar joint. Following reduction, stabilization requires optimal fixation of the intermediate column as well as the radial column. In the case of a fractured distal ulna that compromises the distal radial ulnar joint, the ulnar column should be stabilized as well. The variable angle locking screw and the standard locking screw are shown. The head of the variable angle locking screw has a rounded shape, whereas the head of the standard locking screw has a conical shape. The new design of the plate hole in the head of the plate allows the variable angle locking screw to be inserted up to 15 degrees off axis in all directions. The variable angle locking screw can also be inserted at a fixed angle into the threaded portion of the combi plate holes. The standard locking screw can only be inserted at a fixed angle and only in the threaded portion of the combi plate holes. To drill off-axis holes at the desired angle, the funnel-shaped end of the universal variable angle locking drill guide is used. The drill guide tip is inserted coaxially into the cloverleaf design of the plate hole. The tip of the drill guide must remain fully seated in the plate hole while drilling. The funnel of the drill guide allows the angle of the 1.8 millimeter drill bit to be varied as much as 30 degrees. The fixed angle end of the drill guide only allows the drill bit to follow the nominal trajectory of the locking hole. The plate is available in a left and right version. For the pre-operative planning, X-rays and CT scans of the injured hand are used to check the fracture pattern, dislocation of joints, and comminuted fracture zones. To better plan the restoration of the length, an X-ray of the uninjured wrist may be helpful. The instruments needed for this exercise include two soft tissue retractors, the 1.8 millimeter drill bit, the 2.4 millimeter universal drill guide, the 1.8 millimeter universal variable angle locking drill guide, the threaded LCP drill guide, and the depth gauge for 2 millimeter and 2.4 millimeter screws. To insert variable angle locking screws at a fixed angle, the seven hole guide block with positioning screw and the 1.8 millimeter drill guide for the guide block can also be used. Also needed are the short T8 star drive screwdriver shaft 
and the 0.8 newton meter torque limiting attachment with handle. The patient is placed in a supine position with the arm abducted and fully supinated. The C arm must be placed to obtain adequate images when needed. The distal Henry approach is used on the model. A longitudinal incision is made slightly radial to the flexor carpi radialis tendon, or FCR. This point marks the height of the radius styloid as an indicator for the maximal distal end of the incision. The dissection is made between the FCR and the radial artery, exposing the pronator quadratus. The pronator quadratus is detached from the lateral board of the radius and elevated toward the ulna. It is important to leave the volar wrist capsule intact to avoid devascularization of the fracture fragments and destabilization of the volar wrist ligament. The fracture is reduced using the preferred reduction technique. The reduction technique will be fracture specific. The plate is positioned on the extra articular volar surface to judge where the provisional K wires can be applied. The reduced fracture is temporarily fixed by two 1.25 millimeter K wires. A K-wire is inserted through the intact wrist capsule into the radial carpal joint. The distal rim of the plate should lie approximately 5 millimeters proximal to the K-wire. If necessary, 1.25 millimeter K-wires can be inserted through selected K-wire holes in the plate to temporarily fix the plate distally. The first screw to be inserted is a cortex screw applied through the elongated hole in the plate shaft. The 1.8 mm drill bit is used for a 2.4 mm locking or cortex screw. The 2 mm drill bit would be used for a 2.7 mm cortex screw. The order of screw insertion in the shaft and metaphysis may vary depending on the fracture pattern and reduction technique. The depth is measured with the depth gauge. A 2.4 mm cortex screw is inserted. The plate position is adjusted if necessary, and the screw is tightened with the T8 star drive screwdriver. The plate position should be checked under image intensification. The K-wire identifying the joint is no longer required and is removed. To drill off axis holes at the appropriate angle, the funnel-shaped end of the universal variable angle locking drill guide is used. The funnel of the drill guide allows the angle of the 1.8 mm drill bit to be varied as much as 30 degrees. The drill bit angle is verified under the image intensifier to ensure that the desired angle has been achieved. Care must be taken that the drill bit does not enter the radial carpal joint, which would leave the screw in an intra-articular position. If necessary, Redrilling at a different angle and verification under image intensifier control are done. The depth is measured with the depth gauge. The appropriate length 2.4 mm variable angle locking screw is introduced using the 0.8 newton meter torque limiting attachment and the screwdriver shaft. To insert a variable angle locking screw at a fixed angle, the 1.8 mm drill bit is used with the fixed angle end of the drill guide. This end of the drill guide only allows the drill bit to follow the trajectory of the locking hole. The depth of the hole can be read directly from the marks on the drill and the scale on the drill guide. 
in this case, 16 millimeters. The appropriate locking screw is inserted. As an option, variable angle locking screws can be introduced at a fixed angle through the guide block, which is attached to the plate with the positioning screw. The 1.8 mm drill guide with scale is inserted into the chosen hole of the guide block. The depth can be read off the scale. The drill guide is removed. The appropriate locking screw is inserted. The guide block is removed. The remaining plate holes in the head of the plate are filled as necessary. The K wires are now removed. The remaining plate holes in the shaft are filled with locking screws. If a short plate is used, a locking screw can be inserted into the threaded part of the elongated plate hole to achieve stronger fixation. In a clinical setting, several radiographic views of the distal radius are taken to ensure correct alignment and reduction. The screw placement and length must also be confirmed. Additional views, such as 10 degrees dorsally tilted, 20 degrees inclined lateral, and 45 degrees pronated oblique, ensure that the distal screws are not in the joint. The one-year follow-up x-rays show anatomical consolidation of the fracture. The patient is pain-free and has symmetrical motion of the wrist in all planes. This presentation has demonstrated the clinical indications for the variable angle LCP two-column distal radius plate, the three-column theory, the principles of the variable angle locking system, the pre-operative planning, the instruments needed, the patient position and the approach, and the application of the implant.